Welcome back. I hope you've been able to work out what the direction of the magnetic field would be if we're looking at a straight current carrying conductor. And if we're looking at it so that we can see the, 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 the piece of wire, the con conductor, lengthwise. Let's have a look and see uh, how we're going to resolve this. And of course, the hint is that when we do this sort of thing, like we've got in this diagram, we can see that there's a circular magnetic field pattern. We recognize that the direction of the current, as we've shown it earlier, is upwards. So we can show that as a, uh, a piece of uh, an arrow pointing up. But now we're going to use the right-hand rule. And we recognize that if the thumb is pointing in the direction of the current, then the fingers are coming, in which direction? Out of the board. And when something comes out of the board over here, then we can say on this side, out of the board, there are going to be little dots. So all the way along this, this board, there are going to be little dots. And if we use the right-hand rule again, and I just turn to this side, we recognize that the direction of the magnetic field is going to be into the board. And when we show into the board, we're going to use crosses. So you see, the cross dot notation can be used for either the direction of the magnetic field or the direction of the current. Uh, just like we've shown earlier, it depends on where your eye is. So in this case, we're kind of looking at the piece of wire, the straight piece of wire, in a long form. We're looking from a side view. What happens if we change our point of view and we now look at an end-on view? For those of you do, that do life sciences, you can imagine that you're going to cut this piece of wire crosswise. We'd say it's a cross-sectional view. So think about your eye being in that position or in this position over here. We're going to either be looking at the top down, the current coming towards me, or from the bottom up, the current going away from me. And this is where it gets quite interesting. And so I want you to take time and follow me as we recognize, yes, this current does exist, and it exists depending on the amount of uh, current that actually passes through the conductor. It can have different strengths. Um, if it's a small current, smaller uh, magnetic field, smaller effect on the iron filings, bigger current, bigger effect. We can also rec recognize the direction of, the of that field line, so those magnetic fields will change with the direction of the, uh, of the um, electric current. So let's have a look now in terms of where our eye could be and showing a different position. So now if I've taken a cross section, and my eye is looking from the bottom. And I'm saying, in this case, the current is going in which direction? The cross is going in to this plane. It's going into the conductor. Now, what effect is that going to have? Well, it's going to produce a magnetic field around, around the conductor. And so we need to be able to use our right-hand rule to show that. So let's have a look here. If I take my right hand, be careful not to use your left hand. I'm going to use my thumb to show the direction. And I'm saying the thumb is going into the plane. In which direction is the curl of my fingers going? Well, I hope you can see that over here, the fingers are curling upwards. And over here, they're going sideways. And if I change my direction, and I'm moving to this side, they'd be going down. And over here, if I do it from the bottom and I move my hand, you can see the curl of the fingers are going round in that direction. And so I've put little arrows to indicate the direction of the magnetic field. But in fact, what we can do is we can expand on the pattern that is given by the iron filings. And we can represent these magnetic this magnetic field in terms of field lines. Now remember, field lines may not cross each other. So we start with those that are 
close to the conductor. And as they go further apart, we know the field weakens. Where the field is strong, the magnetic field lines need to be close together. So have a look at my diagram here. And as you can see, I've indicated the direction, confirm it, right hand rule. The current is going in, the uh, direction of the magnetic field is clockwise. Notice over here, these field lines are close together. They're not the same distance between the inner two and the second two. And they're certainly not the same distance. So they're not concentric. This is showing that as the distance away from the conductor increases, the effect of the magnetic field decreases. It's not as strong as it is close to the conductor. Very good. What about if we looked from the other side of that conducting wire. So instead of looking from the bottom now, we're looking from the top. The dot represents the current coming out of the plane, coming towards me. We need to recognize here that we're going to use the right-hand rule again. Don't get confused. Don't use your left hand. The dot is indicating, it's like the arrow coming towards you, you see it as a dot. You don't see the tail feathers. So the thumb now points towards you. It's coming out of the board. And in this case, you see the curl of the fingers is in the opposite direction. It's anti-clockwise. So at each point, I can show the curl of my fingers. And I can even move to this point and say, ah, oh, it's going around that way. And it's coming up this way. The thumb is still coming out towards you. I hope you can see that it's going to form that circular pattern that we saw originally. And we can represent that in drawings. When you do, please make sure that you use a compass uh, to draw your field lines neatly. But they don't need to be the same distance apart. So just like we saw previously, in this representation, notice the direction here is anti-clockwise. It's coming out towards you. Some people make a point at learning those direction, clockwise, anti-clockwise. I don't bother. Just use your right hand rule. Your right hand rule really gives you've got enough to remember with definitions. It's better to learn that and to learn how to use the right hand rule. So current coming out, it's in that direction. Notice again, here this is a weaker magnetic field. And here, it's a strong magnetic field. So this field is not uniform. It's not the same strength everywhere. And so uh, I want to just pick up on that point by having another look at this view, the longitudinal view, and recognize how we're going to represent the current around this. We've done it very quickly earlier on, but let's just uh, do it in a little bit more detail. First thing we're going to recognize that the direction of the current is conventional current. It's from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. We recognize too that uh, there we can use the right hand rule. The right hand rule tells you take your thumb, point it in the direction of the current. Now look what happens when I do that. The thumb is pointing in that direction, the same direction as you can see the current is. Now if I turn my fingers, in which direction are the fingers coming? They're coming out towards you. They're coming towards you. So at the top here, they're going to be coming out of the board. And so we would need to put over here a representation of something coming out. What will that be? A cross or a dot? You've got it. It's a, it's a little dot. So we're going to say there are the dots. And these dots are going to be close together because it's representing a strong magnetic field. But now have another look. If I have this direction of the current, what's happening below, the the, uh, below this conductor? Below the conductor, the fingers are no longer coming towards you. Which way are they going? They're going away from you. They're going into the plane of the ball. And so we recognize we're going to show those as little crosses. And so we recognize here we've got a method of representing the direction of the magnetic field around the conductor. 
in more detail, I've put in further away from the magnetic, from this current carrying conductor. And what I want you to see is I've deliberately put the crosses on this side close together. That's a strong magnetic field. Over here, they're further apart. They've decreased. And so they, they spread out. And that's representing a weak field. So even over here, there are fewer of them. Over here, the field would be weak. But close together, they'd be strong. So it's quite important for you to recognize that. The question is, what happens if we switch the terminals? If we switch the polarity of the battery? Well, here we go. Now we've got the positive end on this side, got the negative end on that side. What do you think we're going to do? Well, we do exactly the same as before. But notice what happens now. We put the thumb in the direction of the current, in this side, it's going in at the top, above, and it's coming out at the bottom. And so that's exactly what I've represented over here. And recognize again that when they are far apart from each other, those field lines are representing a weak electric, uh, magnetic field. This is weak, where this is stronger. Very good. Let's summarize our last few points over here. The summary that we're looking at is recognizing, first of all, that around every current carrying conductor, there is a magnetic field. Guys, this doesn't matter how strong or weak the current is. If the current is very small, the magnetic effect will be very small. The magnetic field will be very small, but it's still there. If the current is very large, then the magnetic field will be much bigger. Recognize that the direction of the field is perpendicular to the current direction. And remember, we use the right-hand rule to find the current and field direction, and we use dots and crosses to represent when something goes, when it's a dot, it's coming out, when it's going in, then we use a cross. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed that introduction to looking at electromagnetism. So, Please don't uh, forget it, practice, draw diagrams, and we'll see you again pretty soon.